Ladies and gentlemen, the San Francisco Boys Choir.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sandy Kane Gill, the president of SCCM. Wow, wasn't that a really wonderful performance by the San Francisco Boys Choir? Let's give them another round of applause. Welcome to the Critical Care Congress. I'm so glad to see so many of you here in San Francisco. Our theme this year is Better Together, and being back with you in person is truly better together. This year's theme is more than just about our gathering of critical care healthcare professionals here in San Francisco. When we say better together, we mean in all ways and all the time. Words like community and giving back and paying it forward come to mind. For example, now that we've resumed our in-person events, we've expanded our efforts to make sure that wherever we go globally, we work together with local communities to positively impact those that we're in. To help you get more out of Congress and seeing how we are better together, this year, we're bringing you many of the wonderful things that San Francisco and the Golden State have to offer. We focused on local organizations like the Boys Choir, where we can provide financial support to help with the important work they do with the city's youth. Some of those young people may one day be our fellow healthcare professionals. We've also partnered with San Francisco's Project Homeless Connect to help homeless and at-risk individuals improve their quality of life, which speaks directly to SCCM's health equity initiatives. Project Homeless Connect staff and others will be joining us in the exhibit hall for Stop the Bleed training. If you haven't received this training, it's a great time to do so. We've also reached out to Chinese American community to bring both the legend of the fortune cookie and also an exhibit exhibition on traditional Chinese medicine and how that connects with Western allopathic medicine. Additionally, on your way in this morning, you may have enjoyed a donut. Well, I uh, hope you noticed that these were from San Francisco's best small local donut shops. And maybe you had some of the coffee from our new SCCM's Max's Cafe. This brand represents one of the things that our founding president, Dr. Max Harry Weil, enjoyed most. Gathering together to discuss what was heard in educational sessions and what was going on at everyone's institution. He was well known for his gatherings where individuals from trainee to expert would meet and to debate the local and important issues of the day. 
Throughout this Congress, look for Max's Cafe logo and sit down to continue the conversation because we are better together. Skip a session if you must so you can continue the dialogue with your colleagues and engage in some much needed personal interaction. The program is completely available online when you get home and included with your registration. You'll also find coffee all day long in Max's Cafe located just outside the entrance to the exhibit hall. Pick up a free water bottle there or throughout the center and use one of those sustainable water bottle filler systems in the facility to keep yourself hydrated and refreshed. Better together also means each of us working together in our local communities to make a positive impact outside of our, professional, our daily professional duties. You may not know that our founding president directed dozens of CPR courses each year in his community training thousands of individuals on this important and simple life-saving skill. And while our founding fathers led the way in ensuring that the society was professionally diverse, they were in fact founding fathers. So your elected council has set forth a broad range of actions and goals which are now being implemented across the society to ensure that the program is diverse in every possible way. Being better together is only possible if our activities include the full spectrum of diversity. As an organizational leader in this space, we anticipate our comprehensive DEI program will be replicated by many others. But better together also means working closely with our patients and their families. We all know that care and outcomes are best when our ICU teams have both a strong professional relationship and a close interaction with our patients and their families. And it's my honor to tell you about two extraordinary groups who exemplify our Better Together theme. Levi was a 19-year-old male who required extrication at the scene of his motor vehicle collision and was intubated pre-hospital and admitted to Thomas Jefferson University Hospital with polytrauma and significant burns. Against all odds, he should have died from his injuries, but he did not. And one of his injuries might have taken his life, let alone the constellation of injuries combined. The exceptional multidisciplinary team, spearheaded by the burn surgeon, working in tandem with the surgical intensive care unit team, along with the patient's fight to live and his mother's unparalleled strength and resolve, help beat the odds and enable a heroic outcome worthy of distinction. Levi is currently home after a stay in rehab and doing well. He is seen in the burn clinic weekly and requires some touch up of his skin grafts, but he and his family were able to take a much needed vacation recently. The continuous compassion, professionalism, dedication, and critical skills demonstrated throughout the entire length of stay helped Levi achieve progress in his hospitalization course. Without the members of the interprofessional staff, this would not have been possible. Many days we struggle to find the reasons why we do what we do. And it's heroes like Levi and his family that give us the motivation to keep going. Levi and his family were an inspiration to his entire care team and are really the true heroes. Please join me in congratulating Levi and his care team at Thomas Jefferson Hospital as one group of this year's ICU heroes.
Levi. Now, let me introduce you to another group of heroes. Rowan was a 15-year-old male with severe cardiorespiratory failure from COVID-19 pneumonia, requiring prolonged ECMO, ventilatory, and CRRT support. Rowan's story is unique in many aspects, starting from the unusual severity of his illness and his prolonged ECMO course. Throughout the pandemic, it was extremely rare to place children on ECMO due to COVID-19 pneumonia. And placing a previously healthy athletic teenager on a circuit for a protracted run was both unexpected and challenging. With a 56-day course of ECMO that required three configurations, this case pushed everyone on his care team at Randall's Children's Hospital to the peak of their abilities. Another unique aspect of his story was the placement of the Protec Duo catheter, which has been used only a handful of times in the pediatric population. With the guidance and experience from other ECMO centers, the care team was able to achieve an excellent outcome, utilizing a device which had not been used in any pediatric centers in the Pacific Northwest region previously. The amount of collaboration across the hospital systems and subspecialties was enormous, and the ability to do so was undoubtedly contributed to Rowan's success. Please join me in congratulating Rowan and his care team at Randall's Children's Hospital as an example of ICU heroes. Thank you all for sharing those inspirational stories. To learn more about these ICU heroes, join them today at 9.45 a.m. in the Critical Crosstalk Theater in the Exhibit Hall. Now, I'd like to tell you about another individual whose lifetime of service and dedication to critical care has been made possible with a deep belief in being better together. Dr. John Marshall, who is the winner of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. John is a professor of surgery at the University of Toronto, a critical care physician at St. Michael's Hospital, a senior investigator in the Keenan Research Center for Biomedical Science. He holds the Unity Health Chair in Trauma Research. He has academic interests lie in sepsis, the host innate immune response to trauma and infection, his laboratory studies include the cellular mechanisms that prolong neutrophil survival and critical illness. He has an active research interest in sepsis and ICU-inquired infection, in outcome measures, and the design of clinical trials. He leads the Canadian Institutes of Health research-funded research programs in novel clinical trial designs and the treatment of post-resuscitation fluid overload in critically ill patients and has been an active investigator in multiple clinical trials. He is the Canadian Principal Investigator for the REMAP-CAP, a global platform trial of, for the treatments of COVID-19. He has published close to 600 manuscripts and book chapters. He has been cited 145,000 times. Congratulations, John, on a lifetime of work that has inspired so many.
thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kane Gill. Thank you to the Society. Uh, thanks to Audra and the staff of the Society who made this, uh, the logistics uh, possible. Thank you to the audience for that response. I'm, I'm really moved. Um, I'll have a lot more to say tomorrow, uh, but I do have to say how good it is to see people in three dimensions again after three years of looking at people in boxes on Zoom calls. And uh, I think the theme of this meeting, that we're better together, uh, has never been more true. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's important that we take this opportunity to thank another extraordinary individual, the founding editor of our journal, Pediatric Critical Care Medicine. Dr. Pat Kohanek retired in 2020. Pat was the founding editor, and with his colleagues and the editorial board, they gained worldwide recognition for the journal, which is known as the home for important research in critical, pediatric critical care. Pat, a huge thank you from all of us for your careful stewardship and expert management of PCCM. It's very much appreciated. <laughs> much of Dr. Marshall and Dr. Kohanek's achievements involved mentorship and education at all levels and with so many different groups of colleagues and trainees. So today, I'm pleased to announce that SCCM will be launching the LEAD Professional Mentorship Program, so you can participate directly in the efforts to pay it forward. As the program rolls out during the year, look for announcements and ways you become more involved in developing the next generation of leaders in our field. In addition to this exciting new endeavor, I've also wanted to share with you our new improved Learn ICU SCCM's consolidated online education platform. Let's take a look. In critical care, you can never stop learning. Your career advancement and your patients' outcomes both depend on staying current with the latest education and research. So what's the best way for you to learn more, improve outcomes, and advance your practice? Introducing the new Learn ICU, the central location for all of the educational activities and resources from the Society of Critical Care Medicine. Learn ICU puts the knowledge of SCCM at your fingertips. It's all available in one place and accessible anytime, anywhere, on any device. Learn ICU is a diverse collection of high quality education and assessment tools on popular clinical topics including sepsis, cardiology, pharmacology and neuroscience, plus fundamental critical care education. And as you'd expect from SCCM, all Learn ICU content is peer-reviewed and developed by multi-professional subject matter experts in critical care. Altogether, you'll find more than 60 online educational activities, with more added all the time. These activities give you the opportunity to assess your knowledge, identify and address any knowledge gaps, and claim accredited continuing education credit. But that's not all. In Learn ICU, you'll also get exclusive access to the complete SCCM resource library, which includes more than 1,000 resources, such as presentations, webcasts, podcasts, articles, guidelines, and more. Anyone can browse the library, and content is free to SCCM members. SCCM select members get even more bonus content. So, how can today's Learn ICU help you? It lets you customize your learning experience with the essential online education you need to stay up to date and be successful. Start by downloading the Learn ICU app, which lets you access everything, anytime, anywhere, even when you don't have an internet connection. Learn ICU is built to help you find what you need quickly and easily. Every piece of content is categorized by knowledge area and the catalog is fully searchable. All Learn ICU content contains carefully selected keywords that let you search and sort with as much detail as you wish. Learn ICU even suggests content for you based on your learning profile. With all this essential content so easy to find, you can create your own personalized experience. 
Browse the Learn ICU catalog and build a list of your favorite courses. Bookmark items in the SCCM Resource Library to curate your own collection. Receive automatic notifications each time new content is added to the SCCM Resource Library, so you'll never miss the latest additions and new information. Be sure to explore the new professional development and education knowledge areas in the SCCM Resource Library. Level up with courses and other resources designed to advance your career. New content from SCCM's Leadership, Empowerment, and Development program will help you excel at every level. Achieving your goals is what Learn ICU is all about. It gives you access to all of SCCM's educational resources and the power to customize your learning to advance your practice and career. Download the app to get started with the new Learn ICU today. It's an impressive system and we'll continue to expand and improve the access to the resources we know you've come to rely on during these uncertain times. And while the times we live in may seem uncertain, they also create the opportunity to double down on our Better Together commitment to help many in need, both in the US and through our global health initiatives as well. When the Ukraine invasion began, many of you stepped up and made donations to SCCM's Emergency Relief Fund while others got to work seeing what was needed and how they could help. Thanks to the donors and the doers, we're investing $1.8 million in the Ukraine relief efforts. $600,000 has already been awarded to help ICUs purchase vital equipment and medications. We rapidly translated FCCS crisis response and made it available and free to all. And we recently completed free translated versions of FCCS in both Ukraine and Polish, as many patients and refugees have relocated. Soon, we'll have boots on the ground in Ukraine, thanks to a generous gift from our good friends at Direct Relief. In Lviv, in Mar this March, we'll train 150 ICU clinicians and the use of ultrasound. Thanks to our friends at Butterfly, the participants will receive free handheld ultrasound equipment to take back to their hospitals to immediately put their new skills to work in caring for patients. And we'll, we will keep connected with our expert faculty via an electronic consultation platform to provide all trainees with free membership so they can access SCCM's resources as the war persists. Certainly, achievements that rely on being better together. As you can tell by now, we're not your typical medical society. Our humanitarian work spans the globe, providing free training and educational resources, like our journal and low resource settings everywhere, as well as supplies, medications, and volunteers when disaster strikes. From FCCS training done in 25 countries, in partnership with the United States Agency for International Development, to training more than 6,000 individuals in our partnership with the Every Heartbeat Matters campaign and the CDC, we live the Better Together mantra every day. If you know of an institution in a low resource setting that would benefit from free training, you can find the application on the SCCM website at the address shown on the screen. And for those of you who donate to support these efforts, thank you very much. And we appreciate all the efforts with that. Today, I also want to tell you about an extraordinary new SCCM Global Health Initiative. We're working with our partners at Direct Relief, focused on three sites in Africa where the need is great. From our prior work across the continent, we know that our training programs are impactful in many places. But some hospitals lack the essential resources such that training alone will not improve outcomes. To tell you more about this project known as AIRS or the Africa Infrastructure Relief Support Project, please welcome our good friend from Direct Relief, their CEO, Thomas Teig, and 
SCCM member and the AIRS Project Chair, Dr. John Sampson. Thank you. Good morning. After having practiced in over a dozen countries since my graduation from UCSF School of Medicine many years ago, I have actually experienced the grief of losing patients because, simply because uh, of a lack of oxygen. And these are critically ill patients, which we all know cannot be treated without oxygen. So with great, a great sense of gratitude, um, it gives me an honor to know that Direct Relief has, has provided support for the Society of Critical Care Medicine to actually develop a program to provide critical infrastructure for oxygen access and renewable energy across major medical centers in three African countries. I mean, think about it. With today's technology, it's just um, not appropriate for people to actually lose their lives simply because uh, their hospital doesn't have access to an oxygen system. I invite you all to join us tonight at 6.30 at the Hilton Union Square um, Ballroom B for a celebration of this new SCCM Global Health Program where you'll learn about the Ukraine Relief Project, you'll learn more about the Africa Infrastructure and Relief Support Program and other SCCM Global Health outreaches. So please join us tonight as we celebrate uh, this new SECM Global Health Initiative. Great. Thank you, Doctor. Um, thank you for inviting me. I feel like I'm kind of get to participate with the Praetorian Guard against the Grim Reaper. <laughs> and that's you. Seriously. Um, I think, so I'd be remiss not to first say, just say thank you for what, and we, lay people like me need people like you every day for that moment, the worst moment in your life that there are people like you who are the last best hope, either the pearly gates or somewhere else. Um, and no, at no time has, in the past hundred years, has that been more true than the past three. So, thank you. Um, you know, we tend to count a lot of things. It's proof, it's evidence. And one of the things in COVID we counted was how many people died. I wish there were a number of how many people you saved, because I think there's a lot, that list would be a lot longer <clears throat> had it not been for what you do every day. So um, coming out of COVID, it's, I think what Dr. Sampson just uh, talked about is the first affirmative thing <clears throat> that we can do to address a chronic problem that's been lurking in plain sight for years in many areas. And COVID made it acute that oxygen and essential medicine is just not available in adequate amounts. So there's no one better in the world to address this than the people who've written the technical guidelines, who use it for every patient who comes in. So for direct relief, it's a deep privilege for us to uh, play a role in working with you, providing support, and this initial effort, I hope, is a showcase for something that becomes much, much bigger um, because much more is needed. So thank you, SCCM. Let's go. Thomas and John, we can't thank you enough for your efforts and support in this project. This new and exciting $5.6 million project dramatically expands the nature of our humanitarian work as we continue to partner locally and globally to be better together. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce to you my friend and colleague and the next president of the Society of Critical Care Medicine, Vinay Nedkarni. Vinay is a professor and endowed chair at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Departments of Anesthesiology, Critical Care, and Pediatrics at the University of Pennsylvania, Perelman School of Medicine. His extensive career has included not only serving on SCCM's council, 
but also on the board of directors of the World Federation of Pediatric Intensive and Critical Care Societies. He was the president of the Citizen CPR Foundation, founding director for the CHOP Academy for Resuscitation of Children, and the founding director for the CHOP Center for Simulation, Advanced Education, and Innovation. He has served as chair of the American Heart Association's Emergency Cardiovascular Care Committee, executive committee of the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation, and was the founding member of the American Heart Association's National Registry of CPR in over 400 nationwide hospitals. Benai's impressive work in pediatrics extends to his participation in the AHRQ-funded National Emergency Airway Registry for children conducted across 50 hospitals in the United States, and the 106-site Inspire Network, and the 60-member Petty Rescue Learning Co-Laboratory that is collecting data to inform practice and help pioneer the next generation of resuscitation care. He is also the leader of the Global Resuscitation Alliance for Resuscitation of Children. For more than 30 years, Benai has demonstrated his commitment to pay it forward, volunteering with Operation Smile International to provide craniofacial surgical repair for more than 4,000 children in resource-limited settings. Over the past five years, he's mentored the growth and development of the Pediatric Simulation Training and Research Society across India. And the birth of the ABC Stop the Bleed program Talked to, talk to rickshaw drivers, shop owners, police, first responders, and high school children in India. Please join me in welcoming our 52nd president, Dr. Vinay Nadkarni. Well, thank you, Sandy. Good morning, San Francisco, and good morning, SCCM. Um, it is really great to be here. And congratulations to John and to Pat, all the ICU heroes, and all of you that are heroes in your colleagues' eyes, your patients, the families that you care for. I'm really thrilled, humbled, and sincerely bursting with excitement, and as we embark on this next year and to serve you as your president. Um, I really am grateful for the mentorship and the sponsorship and the support that my mentors and role models have provided to me, so many of you, over so many years. Also, the presidents and the leadership of the SCCM, especially Sandy, and the staff David and Lynn and um, all of the people who have supported me along the way, including my dear colleagues at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the University of Pennsylvania, and of course, most importantly, my family, uh, my wife, Ellen, uh, who's my guiding light. Today, um, <clears throat> I want to think with you a little bit about dreaming impossible dreams, a simple message, <clears throat> make those dreams reality, and pay it forward. Those three things, when I think about <clears throat> the mission of the SCCM over time, <clears throat> over the past 50 years, I'm struck <clears throat> by the simplicity of the message Dream impossible dreams, make them reality. I'm always here for you. Thank you. <laughs> An example of the support that you get at SCCM. Sandy, I'm gonna give this back to you. <laughs> Thanks. And pay it forward. My parents were dreamers. My father grew up in rural India one of 11 children, only three of which survived beyond the age of one year. A reminder of the fragility and the challenges for emergency and critical care in resource-limited settings. My mother, on the other hand, was the offspring of Russian Jewish ancestry and grew up in the slums of Brooklyn, New York after the Depression, working and living in a family bakery 
and um, experiencing life in the slums. As children, we grew up in the shadow of the National Institutes of Health, a multicultural, mixed-race family, and um, we really uh, reveled in the stories of our parents' anecdotes, the struggles, the triumphs, the constant desire to pay it forward, and the priority on education, discipline, diversity, inclusivity, celebrating diversity of mind and spirit. Really similar themes that we're revisiting and reinforcing at SCCM today. Now, our founders and the first presidents of SCCM, Max Harry Weil, William Shoemaker, and Peter Saffer, they were dreamers also. They were also realists and certainly paid it forward. They seemed to peer into a crystal ball and created a vision that we are now following, personalized, goal-directed care and caring without walls or boundaries. From a personal standpoint, I remember very vividly meeting Max Harrywell and Peter Saffer. I was fresh out of fellowship, I was green, and I was in a forum like this presenting at the CPR Guidelines con uh, Conference in 1990 the evidence or lack of evidence of epinephrine during CPR. Peter Saffer on the left, Max Harrywell on the right, disagreeing. And there I was presenting the evidence and sort of being bombarded from either side uh, and, and literally torn apart. I was dejected. I retired to the pool and was sort of licking my wounds after the presentation. And each of them individually, passionately and compassionately coming up, sort of supporting me, giving me the information, sharing, inviting me into the family of critical care medicine and continuing to sort of stimulate and motivate me to move forward, paying it forward. Now we are faced with what people call unprecedented challenges. We're emerging from the COVID pandemic. But in every generation since SCCM was founded, we have faced unprecedented challenges. If I reflect back on my own experience emerging uh, from fellowship to my first job in private practice in Delaware in 1990, there was no internet. There was no MRI, limited availability of CT scans, no electronic health records, primitive cell phones, we rationed pulse oximetry, end tidal CO2 only existed in the operating room. We had limited or no access to ultrasound. It took us a day or two oftentimes to get an echocardiogram. There was no Facebook, there was no TikTok, there was no social media. We've come a long way. But we did experience unprecedented challenges, I remember that the HIV and the emergence of AIDS and the feelings of helplessness in, tr in treating that, and then the discovery of the breakthrough medications that changed the paradigm for that. The trials of magic bullets like anti-endotoxin antibodies, anti-TNF antibodies, trying to find that magic bullet, being encouraged and then failing. And the roller coaster of steroids and glycemic control, the shock of war and conflict, the disruption of transition to Y2K, and then 9 11. And then <clears throat> Ebola, now COVID, unprecedented challenges throughout the history of critical care medicine. But with that, <clears throat> the theme, we have discovered that all of these critical care conditions are really time dependent. We've consistently learned that time is heart, time is lung, time is brain. We often have very simple evidence-based interventions that can minimize, prevent, or reverse critical illness. <clears throat> An example of this, a couple of weeks ago, 
was seen by millions on TV when DeMar Hamlin collapsed and died on the football field. However, simple interventions, CPR, an automated external defibrillator, a trained emergency response, and excellent critical care reverse that process for a good outcome. That is progress, a system of care that works. We have also learned of the time dependence of disturbance and recovery from our patients and colleagues. Indeed, some of you may remember that six years ago, my sister Nalini was on a stage like this in Hawaii and spoke <coughs> of her personal experiences between earth and sky, disturbance and recovery, traumatic injury and rehabilitation, and the toll that it can take on one individual, a family, a community, caregivers and providers. I want to reflect for a moment on my journey in critical care and a few personal thoughts about my aha moments <clears throat> that I hope will engage and resonate with you. I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember my first night on call as an intern, caring for a child with a mediastinal mass who had been sedated. Thank you. And here we go. Thanks. This child who had been sedated, a big mediastinal mass, occluded their vena cava, blood returned to the heart. I remember climbing on the on the um, stretcher as they were rolled into the operating room doing CPR, a lifeless child, and then having a first-hand view as the surgeon cracked the chest, lifted up the mediastinal mass, unstrangled the vena cava, blood refilled the heart, and the heart start to, started to breathe spontaneously, a vivid memory of reanimation and possibility. I also remember countless hours at the Naval Medical Research Institute in the animal laboratory studying animals with septic shock with people like Joe Carcillo, Pat Kohanek, Rich Mink, and others. Hours and hours putting in PA catheters, manually calculating and measuring cardiac output and vascular resistances, uh, working together to remove evil humors with primitive forms of CAVH and charcoal hemoperfusion and anti-endotoxin uh, antibodies and sitting for hours and hours and monitoring the hours and just discussing the challenges and the paradigms that were going on in critical care. Those were cherished moments. I also remember the exhaustion and the saga of HIV and AIDS and the emergence and scourge of things like pneumocystis, the dramatic effects of early trials of surfactants and liquid ventilation for premature infants, the frustration of trying to treat RSV infection with immune globulins and inhaled ribavirin and early efforts at ECMO, both triumphs and disasters. And I also remember, as many of you will, the desperation and gut-wrenching feeling of helplessness as we exhausted the limits of medical science and of human endurance and watching and being present when some of our patients drew their last breaths and succumbed to disease. Indeed, each of us have our own aha moments that weave a tapestry of emotion and motivate us to persist and to pay it forward. We can see that since the inception of SCCM to now and the future, we have made tremendous progress over the past 50 years. And transformative breakthroughs that have been both leaps and also incremental improvements. Progress has been marked by this combination of trial and error, systematic study, and serendipity, with progress towards a true learning healthcare system. 
With you, your participation, your expertise, your guidance, the SCCM has supported this journey in patient care, quality improvement, research that is rapidly translating new discovery to education, to implementation, to outcome. We have dreamed of, made reality, and are paying it forward with new programs and new wings on the foundation of SCCM. The roadmap for this journey is really a combination of medical science times educational efficiency and local implementation that is leading now not just to survival, but transforming our work products to survivorship. The SCCM has now invested time, effort, and dollars to hire evidence evaluation experts, human factors scientists, implementation scientists to support us as volunteers to accelerate and smooth this process and to change it from a multiplier effect to an exponential, to be exponentially faster, sort of at warp speed. An example of SCCM building this infrastructure to catalyze the formula and push it forward is the Discovery Research Network. In just over five years, Discovery has fielded more than 100 investigator-initiated research proposals, built eight discovery programs, and obtained more than $4 million in extramural funding. Examples like SARI Prep, the Virus Registry, the FDA Cure ID programs. SCCM Discovery has enrolled more than 100,000 subjects in research, dispersed more than 500,000 in young investigator grants, and invested more than $3 million of SCCM money in the Discovery Data Science Campaign. Critical care and data science now has a significant home at SCCM, and we're proud of it. But the path forward is not all numbers and data, it's people. Humans solve problems. SCCM is paying it forward. We heard about the FCCS family of courses that's being disseminated across the globe, including to conflict and war-torn areas. We heard about the AIRS project promoting critical caring everywhere and so much more. We have to dare to dream, to make dreams reality, and to pay it forward. As a final thought to leave you with this morning, uh, I thought I would make a pledge to you and to the society. And although I'm not Hawaiian, I do wear Hawaiian shirts. And I resonate with the philosophy and the harmony of the Hawaiian setting. And in Hawaii, there's a little custom that each time you visit, you make a pledge to the, to the land. One such pledge in Maui is entitled Malama, or caring, and I thought it was appropriate to adapt it because we are the society of critical care and caring. It goes a little bit like this. I pledge to Hana Kupono to do what is right while visiting this landscape. I will mindfully experience the beauty of Aina, the ancestral landscape, and the welcoming spirit of Kama Aina, the local people. I will be ha aha, humble, and kupono, appropriate in my actions. I will remember that each step I take is upon someone's land, someone's home, living history, something sacred to them. It is my kuleana, my responsibility, to seek knowledge and ask before asking. I admire this landscape and will take nothing from this wahi, this place, but memories and leave nothing but gratitude. I pledge to Malama to care for this landscape, the people, and our society. Mahalo. Thank you very much.
Thank you for the water. Thank you very much, Vinay. I sincerely myself appreciate his pledge to us. So that's very nice. Thank you, and we look forward to the upcoming year where you inspire us and you lead us as our next SCCM president. Now, I'd like to introduce to you the leaders of an extraordinary group of volunteers that put this year's program together. Please help me welcome and thank Drs. Amy Zirba, Laura Evans, and Ashish Khanna. Well, thank you, Sandy, and good morning, everybody, and welcome to Congress. It's great seeing so many of you in person in Sunday, San Francisco. I'm Amy Zerba, and along with Laura Evans and Ashish Khanna, we welcome you back to the in-person format of Congress. Your Congress... <laughs> Your Congress Program Committee, including Jerry Zimmerman, who is SCCM's Discovery Network Program Committee Liaison, designed an impressive educational program that is not to disappoint and will help expand your knowledge of critical care. That's right, Amy. The Congress Program this year offers over 20 continuing education hours, more than 200 renowned speakers in critical care, including plenaries, thought leaders, nearly 1,500 scientific abstracts and case reports, and covers over 30 critical care topic areas. The program offers training and resources that you need to attain your personal and professional goals. New tools and technologies will be shared with you, and you'll gain knowledge to improve patient care. Two separate late-breaking sessions, including newly released manuscripts from peer-reviewed journals, are planned this year. The popular daily roundtable discussions will also be held all week, where you can participate in small group facilitated discussions to learn about a wide variety of topics. Continue the conversation and interact with your fellow attendees in designated areas, including the Recharge Center, throughout the Convention Center. And you won't want to miss the discovery session on SARI prep outcomes from a multi-center consortium findings. Be sure to use the Congress app to plan your daily activities. Favorite the sessions to build your own schedule and expedite claiming continuing education credit. Favorited sessions will be added to your My SCCM account each day, making the process of claiming CE easier and faster. And while we're back together this week in San Francisco, make sure to take time to network and collaborate with your colleagues and friends since it's been nearly three years since we were together at pers in person at Congress. Take the opportunity to immerse yourselves in the local culture of this city by the bay. You'll be sure to find plenty of opportunities to unwind, have fun, and gather together. And finally, last but not the least, we want to thank all of our exhibitors and industry sponsors who provided crucial funding to make this year's Congress possible. Be sure to visit them in the exhibit hall throughout the week and personally thank them for their continued participation in and support of this year's Congress. Welcome to the 2023 SCCM Congress. <laughs> <laughs>